All right, good morning, everyone, or afternoon as the case may be. Um, I guess this is your first statistics lesson. It's section 6.1. Um, what I'm going to do most of these lessons is on my iPad here. I think it uh, allows you to see good things on the screen, easy to read. Um, hope it works out for you in terms of seeing me. Um, I also have to try to do some stuff in my calculator, which can get a little tricky. There'll also be some explanations in there that are pretty important. So uh, chapter six, uh, we start in chapter six. It's kind of a standalone chapter on probability. Um, we'll jump into chapter one after this section, but we start with chapter six. I'm just going to teach you a few things here, and uh, we'll get going. Uh, we're going to start by just telling you what a probability distribution is. Probably some of you have all done something with low-level probabilities somewhere in other classes, like marbles in a bag, pick out some marbles, what's the probability, rolling dice, grabbing cards from a deck, that sort of thing. We do a lot of that. So um, here's some stuff for you. So I'm just going to talk, a, a probability distribution basically takes a some sort of experiment and lists all the possible outcomes and their probabilities. So um, every correct probability distribution um, does three things. The first thing is it has it's a complete list of the, what's called the sample space. The sample space space is the list of all of the mutually exclusive outcomes mutually exclusive we'll talk about a little bit more in the course mutually exclusive are two things that cannot happen at the same time uh, but it basically just lists all the possible um, outcomes after you list the outcomes you must list each one of their probabilities um, if you've done work with probability you know the smallest thing probably could be a zero means it can't happen the biggest probability can be as one means it's gonna happen and then the third thing is all the probabilities that just have to add up to one. That means you ensure that all the possible things are there. I'm just going to show you a real quick um, probability distribution here. Um, it's the probability of rolling two dice and the sums. So you notice what I have here. Um, let me change my pen here in a second. What color here? Just the sums here. Whoa, two, sorry, three, four, five. Make that a little smaller. Sorry about that. Let me do that for you. Um, how about this? Two, two, three, so on. Probably I've run a two is one out of 36. There's only one way. It's a one and a one. Um, a three, uh, there are two ways to roll a three. A one and a two is different than a two and a one. And then so on and all the probabilities. This is a really important chart. We're going to use probabilities of dice quite a bit in this chapter. So it's kind of worth uh, knowing, remembering um, just a little bit. Um, and these are all the probability sums. I'm not going to bore you with them. You can pause this anytime you need to take a little bit of look um, at what we're doing. But uh, this is a, an example of a probability distribution. So notice all the outcomes, 2 through 12. Notice all these probabilities. If you add them up, they're going to add up to 1. 1 to 2 is 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 26, 30, 33, 35, 36. Just add them real quick. Uh, 36 out of 36 is one. All right. So we're going to uh, move back now and have you kind of uh, think about one on your own. Um, normally in this class, I would do a lot of like giving you a minute in class to try things. This is a little bit hard on the video. I'm just going to pause if you want to try it. I think it's worth trying sometimes before I ask you to just pause the video, right? Um, I would tell you when we have that, that choice. So I would ask you at this point in class, to draw a probability distribution for flipping a coin twice and then just counting the number of heads. So all you can just gonna flip it twice and count the number of heads. So if you wanna try that right now, just write out that probability distribution. Uh, you just pause the video and go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna keep talking. Um, usually when we do this, we get two different types of answers. These would be the two answers that I would typically see. We'll talk about which one's right and which one's wrong. Um, so normally I would see, probably for both right and wrong answer, I would see the correct number of heads. It's either uh, zero heads, one head, or two heads. So some people would uh, draw this probability distribution saying that there's an even chance um, that the only way to get no heads is two tails. There's only one way to do that. There's one way to get two heads. And there's only one way to get one head also um, because it's a head and a tail. But other people said, no, 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 wait a second. Uh, a head and a tail is different than a tail and a head. So if you think it's head and a he heads and a tails is different than a tails and a head, then you would probably have the second distribution where you'd still have, um, I think right here, number of heads, this would be tails, tails. And then this, you can get tails, heads, or heads, tails, two different ways to get one head. 
So two out of four or one fourth, and the last one is just heads, heads. So we're gonna talk about which one of these is right in just a second um, and how you might um, figure that out. Um, so when mathematicians did this the first time, they were a little unsure which is which. So one of the things you can do is you can simulate this. So I'm gonna show you on your calculator here. I'm gonna take a little pause from here and we're gonna to move to my calculator just to show you how you can do little simulations on your cal calculator. So um, the calculator, hopefully this works out here. The calculator we're using in this class is some sort of TI-84. I have the plus CE, there's all different types, but you need to have a TI-84 in this class, which hopefully I mentioned earlier today. If not, I'm mentioning it now. Um, it has a really powerful statistics package. If you notice this uh, little button stat right there, it's gonna be a pretty important um, thing for us in our class. My computer's doing some weird stuff here, sorry. So anyway, um, you can simulate this situation. So um, we want to simulate, uh, sorry about this, my computer's doing some stuff. So you can simulate, let's just move in. Um, flipping two coins. So let me turn my calculator on for you here so you can see the screen. The button we're going to use right now is the math button right here, math. So we're going to go math and we're going to scroll over to probability um, and then down to this one. It's called random integer number five. We're going to use this one a little bit at the beginning of the course. We'll use pretty much tons of buttons on this calculator. It might be worth kind of taking notes about what we're doing on the calculator also. But we're going to use this random integer. And what you can do is uh, your calculator. Now, some of your calculators might have different software in them. So if you have a calculator that's not showing what you see on my screen right now, you probably want to check with me during office hours or send me an email and I can walk you through how your calculator is going to work. Uh, so the older versions of this calculator look a little different. So basically you could ask your calculator to pick random numbers. So right now I have in here like um, from one to 10. So what you see here is the low number is one, the high number is 10. I'm just asking my calculator to pick five numbers between one and 10. I hit enter, enter, I hit paste, it's gonna put it on the main screen. Um, and by the way, if you have the old software, it probably looks like what it looks like right here. This is random integer, you type in one comma 10 comma five. We're gonna hit enter and it's just gonna pick five random numbers for me, one, six, nine, ten, and three. You can see I did this earlier, it's three, four, one, ten, and two. So if we wanted to flip a coin, we would do random integer. And what we would do is flip a coin, we have to simulate um, what we think is true. So I'm going to um, tell you that it's, um, or, you know, it's 50% to get heads, 50% to get tails. I'm sure you know that. But um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just ask my calculator to pick numbers from zero to one. So it's either going to pick a zero or a one. And then I could count my um, tails as a zero, my heads as a one or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Um, I could have them just do it twice because I'm only going to flip that coin twice. So in this simulation, I flip zero, zero, which would be tails, tails, or heads, heads, whichever one you count. If we did this over and over and over and over and over and over again, we can get idea. Let me go back to my iPad for you here. Um, if we did this over and over and over and over again, we could get an idea for which one of these two is the correct one. Many of you, I think, know that this is the correct probability distribution. Heads, tails is treated differently as uh, Tails heads is different than heads tails. Um, I'm going to do a quick thing. You can also do what are called um, tree diagrams, where you can show, hey, the first flip of the coin is a head or a tail. Flip one. The second flip, if I got a head, I could get a head or a tail. And the second flip, same thing here. And then this would be heads heads, heads tails, tails heads, tails tails. So you can see the tails tails, heads heads, and then one of each. All right. So let's talk a little bit about probability. So that's the idea of a probability distribution. Um, right now, we're going to talk about the different types of probability. I'll try to go through these quick. Um, there are three different types of probability, generally speaking. The first one is called empirical or statistical probability. This is just probability from some sort of data or some sort of experiment. So in other words, if I just put that coin on my calculator 100 times and I use that as my probability distribution, that would be statistical or empirical probability. It's usually not exact because it's just from experiments. If we could do the experiment twice, we'd probably get a different result. They'd probably be pretty close to each other. 
um, the actual probability that we're going to use in this class is what's called classical or theoretical probability. Here's your definition of this. It's just the probability. So that notation right here um, yeah, probability PE is called probability of some event happening. So you'll see me write it that way a lot. P of something probability of two heads. So I might say probability of two heads and that would be one fourth, right? So it's just the number of outcomes in the event divided by the number of outcomes in the sample size. You've done this with marbles in a bag, right? There's eight red and seven blue and six green. It's six divided by the total to give you that probability. That's called classical or theoretical probability. Um, just a little couple definitions here, since I threw them there. Outcome is just the result of a single tri trial, like heads, 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 tails, and then sample space, or all, space is all the possible. Uh, disjoint or mutually exclusive, those same words I use on the first slide, which are um, two events that cannot happen at the same time. The third type of probability we're not going to ever use in this class is just subjective probability, intuition, educated guess, estimate. Um, people do this all the time. Like, what's the probability that um, I'm going to give 10 A's on the next test? See if I can use some old information, that might be a guess. I could also use data from an old experiment also, which would then turn that into empirical or statistical probability. But our probability that we're going to use is the classical or theoretical probability. Um, one thing is important to know, a couple little things here. As I mentioned earlier, if you flip the, we, we use the calculator to flip the coin twice, and I just flipped it twice. If I did it over and over and over and over and over again, um, there's a pretty powerful tool or law called the law of large numbers. Um, you might need this to, to know these by names. It basically says if you are to do random samples over and over and over, the larger the sample that you do, the closer the empirical probability comes to the classical probability. So what that means is this, if I sat here and asked you to flip a coin 10 times, I think you would probably understand that you might not, you would expect to get heads five times and tails five times, but you very well might get three heads and seven tails, it's possible. Two and eight is even possible. So is your own 10, I guess, unlikely, but you're not for sure gonna get close to 50% or exactly 50% or even close. However, um, if you do it more times, this is what the law of large number says, if I were to flip that coin 10,000 times, it's pretty likely that it'll be pretty close to 50%. It's not gonna be exactly 50%, but it's more likely to be close to 50% if you flip it 1,000 times and if you flip it 10 times. Think about flipping it 10 times. You wouldn't be totally surprised if you got four and six, I don't think. If you try it, I don't think you'd be totally surprised. Um, but if you flipped it 1,000 times, I think you'd be really surprised to get 40% heads and 60% tails. You're gonna be much, much closer to 50% if you flip more. That's called the law of large numbers. We'll talk about that more later in the class. It's super, super important in terms of like gambling and Las Vegas games and that sort of thing, which we'll talk about. Now, you've probably done this before. This is called the fundamental principle of counting. And pretty fancy name. It basically says if there are N1 outcomes for stage one, and N2 outcomes for stage two, then the possible number of outcomes for the two stages together is just N1 times N2, just multiply them together. Um, in other words, if I flip a coin, there's two choices, two things on the first outcome, two on the second, so there's four total outcomes. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, heads. If I flip the coin three times, if I flip the coin three times, let me make a little smaller pen here, three flips, um, two times two times two is going to be eight total outcomes. Uh, you can list them all. Um, you could also um, draw a tree diagram to do this, right? You have heads, tails, and then off each branch here, you have heads, tails, heads, tails, and then off each one of these branch, another heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. You can see all the outcomes here, heads, 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 heads for the first one and so on. There are eight, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total outcomes for that. Just multiply them together. Johnny's got eight pair of pants and four shirts. How many outfits can he wear? Eight times four is 32. You can also draw, do it on a two-way table like this. This is an example of this would be pant one, pant two, pant three, pants four, pants five, pants six, shirt A, shirt B, shirt C, shirt D, D, and F, and so on. You can also use this chart. Really cool, real quick. Let me show you this. Let's get rid of these. 
to show you the flip, oops, I should have left those, but let's just show you uh, the flip in the coin model. One, two, three, four, five, six, or rolling the dice, sorry, not flipping the coin. Remember before we had that probability distribution, you could write the sums in there. Two, one and one is two, two and one is three, three and one is four, five, and so on. You could write all the sums in there and you'll see all those outcomes um, that were in this chart um, in the first place, right? So sometimes the probability you just have to list things out it can be a little bit annoying, a little bit uh, slow, that sort of thing. But that's the basic idea about probability. Hopefully that's enough to get you going on the first assignment tonight. It's just some basic stuff. Um, I hope your first day of school was good. And uh, we'll chat in class and go over this homework assignment, um, which is listed on Canvas. So hopefully you got that. Um, I don't have that in front of me. Like I said, so we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.